All right, guys, I decided to do the chamber cut like I do on the Fuelies. Of course, they're different shaped chambers. So it's not going to work exactly the same way it works on a Fuely. On a Fuely, I know it works really well. I've done bunches of Fuelies, and uh, recessing the chamber like that really makes a nice difference. Now, this chamber is flatter in this area than a Fuely chamber. Fuely, you'll be able to make that ramp almost a steady angle out of the, the valve job. But I'm going to say we met with mixed results. As in, this cut changed our flow numbers, and it radically changed where our fuel went. I mean, if you look down down the bowl, that roof is completely clean. That was not like that last flow test. Okay, you can see a bit on the guide. We've got a nice wide swath on the bowl itself, but look how thin it is on the bowl. You can like see right through the blue. Yeah, we got some chunkiness around the, the plug. We've got, we've got some light blue here, where it shows the fuel was, the fuel, the dicum is actually going past it, right? And we've got splatters all the way around. Let's take a look at the bore, because the bore is completely different. Okay, now this is completely different than what we've seen before, right? It's all, instead of it being sheared on the chamber itself, it's all going down to the cylinder bore at this point. I'd like to get some... Uh, opinions on whether that's good or bad. I do like I do like this angle we've got here. That's telling us how much swirl we've got. Yeah, we've got a bunch of chunkiness here. But look at how far around it goes. It goes all the way back to here. Which means we have the short side working pretty well. Remember, that short side is still full height. So, I could alter that some more. All right, let's try that again because the pause button got me. Okay. This is my opinion, so it means nothing, right? By taking this metal away, I believe it made it easier to get rid of air in this portion of the valve periphery, okay? Which is going to change where our air and our blue is going to go. You can see a little bit of the short side curve. When you really get the short side working, you can see the dicum follow right along the short side, right? You don't really have that a whole lot on this. It's more like it's going at a high angle this way now. Look at how steep that is. Let's fix that light. To me, it looks like this angle is steeper than it was. Alright? That looks like it's really leaning over. Which is kind of interesting because it's beyond it's beyond our cut at that point. It's coming all the way over near the plug. Let's do uh, let's do the straight path like Tom uses. Okay, Tom does something with the straight, right? Coming in right across the short side near the plug, but maybe not exactly on the plug. Let's see if we can get some light in there. Okay, something like this. It wants to focus on the stick. Something like that. Now, in reality, it looks like it may want more, more of that chamber cut out. 
which is a possibility. I'll have to think about that. Okay, let's see if we made a, a win or a, a loss. So that was our second cut. Intake, swirl, compared to these. These pluses and minuses are in reference to these. It's very interesting. Look at all these minuses. The only thing that's better is right here. It peaks out a little better. And it's not that big a difference. It's like five, it's like five CFM. Right? But it lost all along here. Now, I think the reason it lost is it changed our air speeds enough to goof the port up a little bit. That might be able to be fixed. But let's take a look at our, our swirls because obviously with the stock chamber it's going to restrict the swirl in that direction a little bit, right? Let's take a look at that on the, on the head. Okay, since we can see our, our liquid flow, right? Coming up this way, swirls around in this direction, okay? And what's nice about swirl is, due to conservation of energy, that once we get that intake charge swirling, as the piston is going down the bore and coming back up, it will continue to swirl. In fact, I'm willing to bet that probably gets a kick when the piston starts to come up near the quench. I'm sure somebody else knows exactly because they have high-speed photography of it or something. But since this edge is now gone, right, it allows it to swirl easier. That's what I think happened. Let's take a look at the numbers. Okay, our swirl. We got a big difference down low, right? Plus, plus, plus. And we lose a little bit right here. But what, that's not really bad because these are a little bit higher than I'd like to see at those lifts. And then she starts to lose it over the short side and it starts to go crazy. So we got plus, plus, plus here. It's an interesting curve. Uh, which one would make more power? I don't know. I guess you guys can give me your opinion there. Yeah, we lost some flow everywhere. But like I said, I think that's due to air speeds because now we've changed where the air wants to come out of the bowl. Okay? And we have a different swirl curve. So let's take a look. That's where our air speeds were. All right, let's check out our pinch. Minus, plus, minus. Little fast in the middle. Okay, not, not a big deal though. All right, center of the cylinder roof, cylinder wall. All right, we lost and we lost which means we've got more going around the short side. Which is kind of surprising. I would think because you've made it easier for air to get out there, you would have increased your roof speeds, but it didn't work that way. Okay, that's why it's so important to test, guys. And our short side radius. Plus, plus, plus. It all sped up. Not necessarily good, as we can see by the flows, right? Okay, so what do we have? We have a couple questions. Not sure if I'm going to do any more work to this. I think I've said that three times already. Uh, give me an idea if you guys would like to see some more. I do have one guy that's interested in picking up a set of Chinese EQs and uh, having me do them up for him. I told him I would give him a discount because it sounded like a cool uh, project. Um, I have dealt with Chinese EQs before, but not the Magnums, the Vortex. And like I said before, they were not as good as the New Zealand Vortex. They were harder to get gains out of. So I think the first thing I said was probably increase the valve size, at least on the intakes, for uh, that project. So we'll see if that happens. And uh, if you guys want something sp specific on this junk magnum head before I chop it to pieces, let me know. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.